Asajj Ventress is one of the most fascinating characters to ever grace the Star Wars universe, with a story carrying a complexity and depth unmatched by many. Grab your lightsabers and hold on to your seats as we explore the return of the formidable Asajj Ventress in the Bad Batch Season 3. I wasn't planning on killing you. But you're making it very tempting. However, it isn't every fan's cup of tea. Let's begin with how Asajj Ventress returns, the reason behind it, and what we can expect from her in the show. Now, to understand just how important Asajj's return is to Star Wars, we first need to navigate the intricate web that is Ventress's past. Born on Dathomir, home to the mystical Night Sisters, Ventress's life was anything but ordinary. Her mother, a Night Sister herself, was a disciple of the formidable Mother Towson. Ventress's childhood shrouded in mystery. But we do know her destiny took a sharp turn when the Jedi Order stepped in. For over 20 years, Ventress honed her Force skills under Jedi Kynarik, but fate can be cruel and Narek's death at the hands of a Ratatouk pirate left Ventress with a heart full of sorrow and a thirst for revenge. Embracing the dark side, she claimed vengeance and Ratatouk itself, catching the eye of none other than Count Dooku, aka Darth Tyrannus. As Dooku's apprentice, Ventress became a key player in the Separatists' war efforts, making her grand entrance in 2008's Star Wars The Clone Wars. She quickly established herself as a formidable foe, crossing lightsabers with the likes of Obi-Wan Kenobi, Anakin Skywalker and Ahsoka Tano. But as the tides of fate would have it, Ventress found herself alone once more, leading her to the life of a bounty hunter, she even teamed up with a young Boba Fett and went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Savage Press and Maul, alongside her former adversary Obi-Wan. Ventress ultimately failed and fled, later appearing in The Clone Wars Season 5, where she helps Anakin clear Ahsoka's name for the bombing of the Jedi Temple. However, Ventress's tale didn't end there. In Star Wars Dark Disciple, based on unproduced episodes of The Clone Wars, she joins forces with Jedi Quinlan Voss in a plot to assassinate Dooku. Love, betrayal, and sacrifice mark the final chapters of her story. Ventress fell in love with Voss, yet the latter is corrupted by the dark side fan Sadooku. She does eventually redeem him, but meets her apparent demise at Dooku's hands. Which leads to fans scratching their heads after the Bad Batch Season 3 trailer dropped, throwing Ventress alive and kicking. Despite her supposed demise in Dark Disciple, how did our favourite Night Sister cheat death, given that the events of the novel happened prior to the events of the Bad Batch Season 3? It's widely expected we'll get a definitive answer to this question during the season, which is also supported by a statement released from Brad Rao, who's one of the masterminds behind the Bad Batch. He's been hinting at the potential for new tales that respect Ventress's legacy. However, the Star Wars community isn't buying it just yet. Some speculate that the show might rewrite parts of Ventress's story, challenging the novel's canon, whilst others believe she never really died, pulling off the ultimate deception. However, it's worth noting here, many fans are running on the assumption that this is the same Ventress they've come to know and fear during the Clone Wars, although there's a big possibility that it isn't, and I'll get into why in a moment. One thing's for sure though, the Ventress debate is as hot as Mustafar right now. Some fans are on edge thinking the showrunners might pull an Ahsoka and reshape Ventress's story, playing fast and loose with the canon established in Dark Disciple. Remember how Tales of the Jedi danced around the novel's narrative? We might see history repeat itself. Others theorize that Ventress is the galaxy's greatest actress, faking her death to escape the clutches of fate. Could she have waited for Voss and Kenobi to leave before springing back into action? It is a long shot, but hey, this is Star Wars after all. Then there's the Night Sister magic angle. Ventress's final resting place in Dark Disciple was no ordinary grave. It was steeped in the Force. The Night Sister's mastery over life and death is legendary, but so far, their resurrections have been more zombie apocalypse than Phoenix Rising. As we gear up for Season 3, the theories will keep coming. Will the show honour the intricate tapestry of Ventress's past, or are we in for a retcon? One thing's for sure, regardless of how her return goes down, the Force is about to get a whole lot more mysterious. Now it's time to bring it back to a point I made a moment ago. We're all assuming the Asajj Ventress in the Bad Batch trailer is the same Asajj Ventress we saw in the Clone Wars. The Bad Batch isn't your typical Star Wars saga, it's a deep dive into the world of clones. Set at the twilight of the Clone Wars, the show follows a unique squad of clones and their young companion Omega, who's technically older than them due to her age not being accelerated, but don't worry about that for now, as they navigate a galaxy in turmoil, from Jango Fett's genetic duplicates to characters like Nala Se and Dr. Hemlock, who are steeped in cloning lore. The series is a tribute to this pivotal Star Wars theme. And then there's the bombshell of Project Necromancer, Emperor Palpatine's top secret initiative. It's all about creating force sensitive clones for him to possess, ensuring his reign endures beyond physical destruction, a fate we all witnessed in Return of the Jedi. So what does this mean for Ventress? 
Could she be a product of similar cloning experiments, or is her appearance a nod to continuity, weaving her back into the narrative tapestry of Star Wars? Now you're probably asking, how could Asajj Ventress return as a clone if the process hasn't been perfected by the time of The Rise of Skywalker, which takes place many years in the future? Well, The Bad Batch has given us some juicy details to chew on, especially in the episode Shadows of Tantis. Emperor Palpatine's visit to the cloning facility revealed a vault full of mysteries, among them cloning cylinders of various sizes, some possibly housing a Zillow beast, others containing unknown humanoids most likely. Could one be Daffin, a non-force sensitive Palpatine clone, or even an early Snoke prototype, let's call it Snoke Mark I. The Empire's quest for force sensitive clones hinges on midichlorian donors, which could also be inside some of the cylinders held in stasis, just waiting to be harvested. But here's the real twist, the Empire has managed a breakthrough with an M count transfer in the Bad Batch Season 3, though the clones M counts are still dwarfed by the donors. Based on George Lucas's vision of midichlorians, only a fraction needs to be transferred to a new host. If the new host is compatible, the midichlorians could multiply amplifying the host's force abilities. The Empire's current success? They've transferred midichlorians without rejection, but the clone isn't reaching its full potential. Hemlock escorting Palpatine to the vault is a clear sign of this progress. No one showcases a gallery of failures to the Emperor. They're onto something, and it's big. Daphne in the cylinder? Highly unlikely, if I'm honest. But Asajj Ventress making an appearance in the trailer? That changes the game. It's plausible that she is the subject of the partial M count transfer success story. I mean, with Darth Vader at the Emperor's side, it's not far fetched to imagine him tipping off Palpatine about Ventress's final resting place. After all, she is a formidable force sensitive whose body could be ripe for experimentation. The Empire's retrieval of Ventress's remains for their cloning trials could be the missing piece of this intergalactic puzzle. If they've managed to harness even a fraction of her M count, the implications are as thrilling as they are terrifying. Project Necromancer is still in its early days. The Empire's cloning techniques have likely evolved since the days of the clone army, and with Asajj Ventress in the mix, we're entering uncharted territory. Imagine the implications if the Empire has not only cloned Ventress's body, but also her memories, perhaps even by accident. This would indeed cast a shadow over the already murky ethics of cloning in the Star Wars universe. This potential development opens up a Pandora's box of narrative possibilities. How will Ventress react to her new existence? What does this mean for the balance of power? The answers lie ahead in the Bad Batch. Her power eclipses many, proven through countless duels with Jedi and Sith legends. Her survival against the likes of Dooku, Oppress, Maul, and General Grievous cements her as a prequel era powerhouse. If Ventress returns, possibly as a clone with diminished force abilities, it wouldn't diminish her complexity. Her diverse training with Night Sisters, Jedi Sith, and Warlords has equipped her with more than just raw power. If her memories are preserved, she'll remain a force to be reckoned with. The tale of Asajj Ventress is as complex as it is captivating. From her origins on Daphomir to her potential return in the Bad Batch, her journey challenges our understanding of life, death, and the Force itself. Whether she's a clone with a past or a new twist in the Star Wars saga, one thing is certain, Ventress remains one of the most enigmatic and powerful characters in the galaxy. What do you think about Ventress's return? Is she a clone? Or is she cheated death through the dark arts of the Night Sisters? Drop your theories in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more deep dives into the Star Wars universe. Until next time, keep your lightsabers clean, I'll catch you in the next one. May the Force be with you.